perfect storm setting up in the Pacific, expected to drench our state early next week, as Nick alluded to. Yeah, we have Scott Sistek, meteorologist. He runs the EmeraldCityWeather.com blog. Okay, Scott, so Cliff Mass is calling this a Godzilla atmospheric river. How bad is this storm going to be? I mean, it's it's definitely going to be a strong storm. I have to admit, I had never heard the term Godzilla atmospheric river until I saw Cliff's blog last night. I know we like Godzilla a lot around here. We had like the Godzilla El Nino like some years ago. We had the Godzilla, was it the heat blob off the coast that was the blob? But uh, it's definitely going to be one of the stronger ones we've seen in recent times, but it's not going to be like a record. We're not talking like you know, off the charts history type storms here. It's just ones we haven't seen one. Last winter, we really kind of got off the hook. We really didn't have too many uh, flooding events. So um, it's definitely one to be ready for. It's definitely one we haven't seen here in a while. This is described, Scott, as Category 5. What does that mean? Right. So that's kind of a new thing. In the last recent years, there's been some research done by uh, some folks down at the University of California at San Diego, and they kind of came up with a rating for atmospheric rivers, and they gave them one to five. And then this one coming in is a five, which sounds really like intense and scary. One thing I want to point out is um, a Category 5 atmospheric river is different than like a Category 5 hurricane and then like an EF5 tornado. We're not talking like extreme, you know, catastrophic kind of damage. They set it up to where like a Category 5 atmospheric river means it's going to be probably more harm than good. Because some atmospheric rivers actually help. That's how we get our water and, uh, you know, our snowpack and all that. So they wanted to do a highlight a way to say like when atmospheric rivers are good versus bad. A 5 is definitely not good. It's bad. They are pretty rare. They're not unheard of. I can't remember the last one we had. But if we get one in a year, it's maybe one a year, but it's probably more like a frequency of about every other year, every three, four, five years. Okay, you say the Snoqualmie and Skagit are right at the edge of a major flood stage. What does major flooding look like for people who live near these rivers, and should people around other rivers be concerned? Right, there's I have my list here. I'm trying to memorize it. It's a lot. So there are uh, six rivers here that are right now, uh, the models say we'll get to moderate flood stage. That would be the Skagit, the Snohomish, the Skycomish, the Snoqualmie, the Cowlitz, and the Skokomish. The Skagit and the Snoqualmie are right like up to the major line. Like they're not there, but they're like within a within an inch. I think the Skagit, or no, the Snoqualmie River was like within two inches of predicted major flooding there. So I looked it up for the Snoqualmie River. It says if it hits 58 feet, which it's predicted to hit like 57.95, uh, it says it will cause flooding from Fall City down through Carnation and Duval. And then uh, the Skagit River also close to flooding. So they're saying from Cedro Willie up through Mount Vernon into the mouth of the river there. Uh, all these other rivers are going on at this point, minor to moderate stage. So we're not talking like historic flood. I did look it up on the, was it the Snoqualmie was about, this is about the same as it was uh, two years ago. Are we worried? The 20, the same, Sorry about that. Flood. Yeah, well, go ahead. Uh, no, are we worried about landslides, especially where there's been some scarring from wildfires this year? Yeah, there's going to be plenty of rain up in the mountains. We're looking at about 7 to 11 inches by the time we get into the end of the week. So, yes, any places that are susceptible to, you know, to landslides, so the burn scars, and even places that aren't burn scars, just regular hillsides, we'll have to keep an eye on it. I said it's been a while since we've had like this much rain in this short of a period of time. And I know in history past, we've had some pretty decent, you know, mudslide areas. So that will definitely be a concern, especially if you're on a hillside or a bluff, you know, keep an eye on things. Okay, so Tuesday specifically looks like the worst day. Uh, what time of day are we thinking that the heaviest rain is going to be coming through? It's, it's kind of, and it looks like it's going to be in two waves. Like we're kind of saying Monday through Wednesday is just kind of like the storm, but there may be kind of like two waves along this atmospheric river. So the first one's kind of Monday into like Monday night, early Tuesday, maybe like a little bit of a let up Tuesday morning. And then the second wave comes in Tuesday afternoon through the night into Wednesday. For the rivers, we're looking at Tuesday is your day when all the models say that the, uh, the flood, the, the rain or the river level should hit the flood stage. So if you're in a river floodplain, kind of you have until Tuesday, but Tuesday morning we'll start seeing some flooding and then peaking somewhere in a Tuesday to Wednesday. And then as Nick alluded to, there's more rain kind of even beyond this toward the end of the week. So even when the, this atmospheric river kind of calms down, we may have more rain kind of more the Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Not quite as heavy, but not good on the heels. When people are saying like five or six inches of rain in this system, can you put that in perspective? Uh, sure. So that would be about a month's worth of rain at this time of year. So like November, December, monthly rainfall averages are about six inches. So we're talking and think how wet, how wet, how wet November was. 
So that'd be like taking all of November and squeezing it into like a week or even just five, six days. So it's a lot for us. It's been two years since Seattle's had two inches of rain in a calendar day. We should probably get that on one of the days here, if not multiple days. So um, it's definitely, it's it's not record, it's not unprecedented, but it is severe and it's something we haven't seen a lot. So we're talking potential, at least, for major flooding. We're talking about potential, at least, for landslides. What should people be doing right now to prepare? I think it's just if you live in the floodplain, you've kind of been through this before. I'm sure this is not going to be like something you've never seen before. So just be ready for, like, you know, flooded roads. The one thing Weather Service, you know, drills in everybody's heads, turn around, don't drown. Um, if you see a flooded road, don't try and go go through it. Go find another way around it. Um, if places start you know, offering sandbags, maybe start getting a jump on that. Like I said, you've got the weekend to get ready. You've even pretty much got Monday to get ready. If you're like, you really want to wait, wait this out a little bit to see what's going to happen. Uh, you've got till Monday, but um, definitely just regular like flooding, flooding preparations. Be ready to be, you know, if you're in a place that gets cut off when it floods, be ready to be cut off for a few days. Maybe get your supplies up to, you know, up to date this weekend. All right. You know what this is for you? Job security, Scott. Yes. <laughs> Thanks for helping us. Yeah, thanks for helping us sort it out.